This one might be a little long guys, but I promise you it is 100% worth it to stick through and watch it to the end. The absolute most insane news leaks we have ever produced. We're, we're rendering, I'm about to start filming, and then more leaks come out, more leaks. And we've been doing this for two days, nonstop, barely any sleep, so work with me on this one. And aside from that, the most insane news in my personal life, I just wanted to share with you before we get into all of that. This is going to be an insane video, but um, I just want to say thank you guys. I have done the unthinkable. <laughs> this has been such a surprise. I did not expect for it, but I purchased a piece of land in historic Vancouver, Washington, underneath the 205 bridge. So whoever lives in the Pacific Northwest, you will literally be driving over my front lawn. <laughs> Um, it's just nuts. Like, I can't even tell you, it just feels like a dream. Like I'm about to wake up and none of this was real. But uh, anyways, I just wanted to say an absolute thank you to you guys. Thank you to the Bro King for working with me on these beautiful renders. Let's get into this. The craziest leaks I've ever done and I hope to top this all the time. Also the giveaway. So we're gonna be doing the AirPods giveaway at the very end, stick through for that one. iOS 12.3, beta two at the very end, just everything i had to roll it all into one video oh and one more thing i'm getting so much devices guys but i don't have enough i'm, I'm making an art mural and i need more devices if you have anything broken don't hesitate just send it i will pay for your shipping please do guys i appreciate it so much that's for the coffee shop gonna be in downtown vancouver soon so we'll start with this one the iphone se is apparently getting rebooted and this is coming from pc tablet a source we don't know anything about so this is very sketchy just consider that but they're saying a 4.8 inch iphone se is in the works to be released later this fall and we've heard this so many times before i don't want to i don't want to get my hopes up for this but it sounds good just what they're saying sounds good about it an organic led display edge to edge face id the apple a12 processor a rectangular slab device so same design no wireless charging it'll be all aluminum on the back and it's to have a 12 megapixel 1.8 aperture camera on the rear likely to be taken straight from the iPhone 10 or possibly 10s so this sounds very unlikely and they're saying it's going to be built in India you know if Apple were to do this device I believe that part but for a $600 price tag which they're saying it would undercut the iPhone 10r it would undercut the 10s with technology taken straight from the 10 or 10s right now it just doesn't make sense in Apple's lineup I want to believe and this is a design we gave it if Apple were to do it something fresh a little bubbly very fun very candy like it's beautiful but will Apple do it we want to believe and there's a huge report on the 2019 iPhones by Mac at Takar. and this one gets me excited because it actually shows there will be physical changes to the design of this year's iPhone from what we heard earlier we thought it would be just a uh, a tick cycle so just a very slight refresh in s cycle Apple switched over to the three-year plan where they're not refreshing the design until three years later and what Mac Takara is saying is we're actually going to be seeing some major your physical changes on this year's iPhones. Aside from the triple lens cameras, they're saying the actual housings will get different thicknesses and the lens protrusions will be shrinking. So that's very exciting on its own. So with the 6.5 inch model, they're saying the housing will be growing by 0.4 millimeters, but to compensate, the lens will be shrinking by 0.25 millimeters. So combined, that's a 0.2 millimeter thickness increase, but overall the lens itself will be getting slightly slimmer. So it'll kind of balance out. I think this is a good thing certainly thicker iPhones means more room for internals more room for that larger battery which is rumored to happen more room for pretty much any activity you want to include in the iPhone and it's not ending there Apple will be changing the thickness on the iPhone 10 R series or 11 R series this year as well so for the 11 R the 6.1 inch model the housing itself will be growing by 0.15 millimeters but the lens will be shrinking by 0.05 millimeters so less of a difference here but still some physical changes you know we did not expect that and it's a lot like Samsung's lineup where they change very incremental minute little details once in a while with every generation basically but it's a physical change I think that that strategy is, is gonna work out for Apple much better. See, from the iPhone 10 to 10S, there was such, you know, very little physical change, but if Apple adds more and more incrementally, I think that'll be better long-term because that gets people excited. If it's the same design, nothing different, you know, you lose that luster. And Mac Takara is confirming that reverse wireless charging will indeed be happening. They said it is a likely feature to be added to the 2019 iPhone lineup. So we've been hearing that from everyone. Samsung's been doing it with 
without a doubt, Apple is adding reverse wireless charging to the 2019 iPhone lineup. And there's been yet another frame leak of the 2019 iPhone taken in a car, of course. All these leaks seem to be taken in cars. And there are some slight deviations in this sheet metal if you take a quick look. So we have a little cutout on the bottom of the wireless charging pad. And to me, that definitely says that they're expanding that feature, possibly faster wireless charging on its own. That's, that's just my speculation. But also, I feel like that could accommodate the wireless reverse power share feature because it's different. It's different than the iPhone XS series and these little tiny changes, man, they add up. Also, you stack this on top of that, that new lens design, everything lines up perfectly. So without a doubt, this is a real leak and I'm sure Apple is fuming about this thing being leaked. I don't know how they did it. With all the new security they keep implementing in all of their Foxconn Pegatron factories, how does stuff keep getting leaked? And good news, Mac Takara is saying that the 18 watt power adapter that's included with currently the new iPad Pros will be included in box with the 2019 iPhones with a USB-C to lightning connector. So this is the second source confirming this. Such good news. Thank you, Apple, for not being a cheapskate and including some basic things that should have been there to begin with. And on leaks, thank you, man. Thank you for what you do. This guy has actually tweeted this and given some insight onto the 2019 iPhones. So this is nuts. What he says is that every single iPhone in the 2019 iPhone lineup will have that new triple lens design. Call it ugly, call it whatever you want, but it is the logical evolution of the iPhone camera. See, here's a point I'd like to bring up, and I, I see this dissent online all the time. You know, people hating on innovation. Apple changes the camera, people laughing at it. Like, as if it's a problem to upgrade the cameras, get better low light capability, get better zoom functions, get better quality. Why would you dissuade that? It just doesn't make sense. Apple is progressing the camera. It may look alien to you, but it is naturally the evolution of, of the camera capability of that camera. It needs to happen. So don't laugh at it. I mean, it may look funny to you, but you will learn to embrace it just like you embrace the notch, just like some of you have embraced the no headphone jack uh, life and, and so on. Apple creates the trends, then everyone copies. And this is interesting because you can see Apple is being influenced here by Samsung. And that's good stuff because not having a difference in cameras gives people a better choice, a cleaner choice. It's just a cleaner lineup all around. And thank you. If Apple really does do this, thank you for that. So that just makes it a simpler choice for the consumer. And of course, wanted to throw in some exclusive Max Weinbach leaks here. Thank you for this. He says that the renders surrounding the triple lens camera of the 2019 iPhone, his source says they are surprisingly accurate. So yes, this is the new iPhone very likely. Unless we hear rumors or leaks saying otherwise, everything is pointing to this being the real and final design of this year's iPhone. And there's more from Max Weinbach. So he's saying that lens, the reason we're seeing such a massive increase in the lens sizes is because every single lens is going to have optical image stabilization now. It will not be reserved just for the wide angle lens or the telephoto lens. Every single one will have it. And that is a beautiful thing because no matter what shooting mode you're in, you will get the most stable photo possible. He also says that for the iPhone 11 R, Apple is debating between three green colors. They're debating between a lime green, a neutral green, and a darker forest green. If I were to choose, I would say definitely the lime green. It pops more, something fresh and new, but either one, you can't go wrong with it. Green is kind of a cool color, underutilized, I think. And the iPhone 11 R is being tested with a single and a dual lens setup. So Apple may still be on the fence between which one to choose, but so far we've heard everything pointing to the iPhone 11 R shipping with a dual lens camera. And an interesting choice on the iPod side of things. Max Weinbach is saying Apple is, is deciding what to do with the iPod lineup. It's such an iconic name. I understand that Apple wants to keep it around, but they just don't know how to make it relevant in 2019. So one of the options that they're considering internally, he says, is they want to take the iPod lineup and convert it into sort of a very budget end iPhone lineup, very similar to what Samsung is doing with their A series phones. So I feel like this could be used for developing markets, India per se, where people just can't afford, you know, the latest and greatest. So Apple could make a very budget end device, call it the iPod with phone capabilities. That part doesn't make sense to me, but the other part does, you know, Apple is really looking at what Samsung is doing correctly and modeling their business off of it. He says they've been looking at that, but the interest has been waning recently. So 
We'll see what happens with that. I personally, I'm surprised that they're even doing anything with the iPod lineup still, and I wanna see where it goes. Okay, and guys, we have a killer report from Ming-Chi Ko. And man, this is why I say this is an insane video leaks because everyone pitched in, everyone has a leak report out within the last couple of days. So what Ming-Chi Ko is saying is that Apple will be testing the waters with micro LED for the first time ever within the next two years in the iMac. And that is so exciting. I think that's one of the best technologies Apple is currently working on that will change everything in the phone. Burn-in issues will no longer be a thing. They're more efficient, they're better, they're brighter. They're just better than organic LED in almost every single way. And I believe the blue LEDs last longer too. And the first device to get micro LED before the iMac actually shipping in quarter two or quarter three of 2019 will be the 31.6 inch 6K display, the standalone one for the Mac Pro or for any other Mac device. I believe you'll be able to use it with the MacBook Pros too eventually. Ming Chico is saying that's coming later this year with micro LED. And I think it certainly makes sense. Apple will be using that technology on a larger scale where it's easier to create and then scale it down eventually to the iPhone whenever that happens, 2022, 2021, maybe even later, but eventually it'll get there. And in conjunction with Ming Chi Ko, Economic Daily News is reporting that Apple will be launching that 15 to 17 inch MacBook Pro in the first half of 2021. So this is so exciting because this will be the most beastly mammoth computer Apple has ever released, a portable one, and it will have micro LED as well. So that 16 inch MacBook Pro, the render we've seen earlier, absolutely gorgeous. I cannot wait for this future, man. That's why I'm so excited is like, you know, innovation is not slowing down. It's just getting better and better in more and more creative ways. And the 16 inch MacBook Pro will, will just be elite, man. I am so excited for that one. Uh, he says that is for sure coming just a little bit later than we originally anticipated. And from what we know earlier, the 16 inch MacBook Pro will feature an all new design and the 13 inch MacBook Pro might be getting a 32 gigabyte RAM option by then. So technology is certainly catching up, baby. And ming Ko is reporting that there will be yet another iPad between quarter four of 2020 and quarter one of 2021 with a micro LED display, a new screen size. There's really nothing much else known about it, but like likely will be replacing the iPad Pro we know already. We're not getting a refresh of the iPad Pros this year. Next year we'll be getting one and then the year after that will be probably an all new design or whatever to accommodate the micro LED display. All right, let's get into some absolutely insane patents Apple is working on right now. So first one is a new coating that will actually make your device more durable. So this is a binding polymer material Apple is implementing into the glass technology on iPhones. And it's unclear if this is already in use on the iPhone XS series or if Apple is to include it in future iPhones, but it entails a, a new process of cooking that glass of, of the actual structure, the molecular structure of that glass and how it can be used to protect your iPhone against falls and scratches. So Apple is committed 100% to making your device more durable every single generation of the iPhone and I love that. This patent also mentions a diamond-like carbon coating that will be used for a very similar purpose on a variety of Apple devices, not limited just to the iPhone, but MacBooks, iPads, even their project car in the future. And Apple has an absolutely nuts patent regarding filming with your iPhone underwater between 90 to 140 feet. I don't know who's gonna be taking their iPhone that deep, but this patent would work theoretically down there. So this is very similar to Max Weinbeck's report where he said Apple is working on an iPhone that would work underwater. And this details a bunch of methods where your iPhone will be using a variety of sensors, including the color ambient sensor to gauge the color and color temperature of the water where you're at, the murkiness of it, and adjust the camera sensor accordingly. It's just nuts. There's so many little intricate details here, but basically it would allow your iPhone to film very deep pressures uh, with a new coating, new sealing techniques, and also a bunch of software tricks to make the video actually look good. Now this ties in with the next patent and Apple is actually working on a MagSafe connector for iPhones, for iPads, basically just a future of the connector. And this is where it's all going, baby. That portless iPhone we were talking about will be using this technology. It's technically not a port, it's a MagSafe connector, it's a magnetic connector for the iPhone where it'll make your life easier if you snag it, your iPhone will go flying, you know, the connector will just 
unclip. Not only that, but this will work in conjunction with that waterproofing. So extreme waterproofing means less ingress, less ports where the water can get in through. So you can see how all these patents eventually, you know, Apple is collecting them, they're hoarding them, but eventually they're gonna make something using a lot of them, even though many of them may seem crazy at the moment. Okay, and this is the craziest of them all because it all ties in again. So Apple is working on a patent for a screen with a layer that will deliver electric shock to your fingers. And I know, hold on. Basically in conjunction with the Taptic Engine or possibly without it, basically when you're gonna be clicking on your screen, you're gonna get a centralized feedback no matter what area of the screen you're clicking on, thanks to this new layer. It's a very mild shock, it will not hurt, guaranteed. Uh, I hope not. <laughs> but anyways, you'll click up here, you'll feel that you're pressing right here. You'll click right here, you'll feel that you're clicking right Right here, no matter where it is on the display, this new system, this new grid of electrical shocks will work with your iPhone anywhere. And I think it is brilliant. So this is my opinion, complete speculation, but the reason why Apple will be shying away from 3D touch is because they could be using this technology on the display and it'll emulate 3D touch without having that expensive layer there. So you won't be able to physically press into the display, but when you press on it, you'll still get a feedback very similar to 3D touch. So you really won't be missing much. It's a brilliant solution if you really think about it. And Max Weinbach was reporting on something like this earlier. We heard about it with the Taptic engines. I thought it would be two Taptic engines in the iPhone, but this is even better. This one-ups everything. Android Q is actually working on a brilliant solution right now to bring a 3D touch solution to all Android phones. And this is with software like a hold and press and working with probably vibration motors to bring that feature to all devices. And that's a great solution. But you can see that 3D touch really isn't something to miss because there are even better innovations going to be replacing it. Okay, and this is where things get really, really interesting from an innovation standpoint. Apple is working to bring 5G to their iPhones. Fast Company is reporting right now that Intel is missing its 2020 deadline for the 5G modem chip that Apple was looking to put in their iPhone next year. So unfortunately, they're also reporting that Apple is unable to meet the deadline for their own in-house modem for 5G as well. So 5G just isn't working out for 2020. It's likely to be delayed for 2021, and it's unclear if Apple will be settling with Qualcomm, how they'll make it work, but eventually they will find a solution and bring 5G to their iPhone, just not until later. Now, here's the funny part. Huawei, Huawei has decided to offer Apple to use their 5G modems. And I trust that just about as much as I trust leaving my car in downtown Portland unlocked with a backpack sitting on the seat. Absolutely not, no way. There is going to be a back door in there, no doubt. <laughs> okay, maybe not, I don't know, but there's a reason those phones are outlawed in America. And this part is so, so amazing. So TSMC is celebrating that they have brought their architecture, their design manufacturing process to the standards to produce five nanometer chips. So their factories are now capable of producing five nanometer transistors onto the new iPhone chips. So let's talk about this one for a moment, guys. You know, the chip history, Apple's chip history is absolutely fascinating. We're at seven nanometers right now. So this year, we're gonna be at seven nanometers refined process with ultraviolet lithography. Next year, with the Apple A14, we're moving to five nanometers. Then the A15 will be five nanometers as well. And it blows my mind. We're getting to the transistor size that's going to be basically the size of an atom almost. And past that, TSMC is not stopping. These guys have gained so much steam that in 2022, they are committing to bringing a three nanometer chip to the market. That's going to be the Apple A16 by then. And I hope that they'll be able to meet that deadline. We'll definitely see, but even 2025 for three nanometers is insane. You know, doing all this work with the chips has really shown me just how much architecture, how much designing engineering goes into producing these. The Apple A12X is a piece of art on its own, man. Just beauty, absolute beauty. I love this stuff. I love digging into phones and, and finding all these little chips and designs and Man, it's taught me so much. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. So I have nothing but the utmost respect for TSMC and Apple for 
pushing the envelope in terms of chip design. Lastly, irrelevant to anything, but thought this was funny. So a fan sent me this. I animated my own to one up him, of course. <laughs> but uh, yeah. All right, guys. So there it is as far as the new stuff. I still want to report on iOS 12.3. So let's get into that real quick. 12.3 beta 2 was released yesterday, and there are actually some very interesting changes. So Japan is entering a new imperial era right now, and iOS 12.3 beta 2 will add support for the Raiwa calendar of Japan, and that'll start on May 1st. The actual new activation method for the Apple Card has been discovered in the firmware as well by developer Rambo, very cool stuff. You'll have an envelope, you'll be able to bring it up to the iPhone, and it'll use NFC pairing to pair itself to the iPhone. Just brilliant stuff all around, I'm so excited for that card. Now, a lot of users are reporting that palm rejection on the new iPad Pro displays has been fixed, so when you're drawing, and I've noticed this, when you're drawing, it would, you know, there'd be a lot of errors and misclicks misdrawings because it wouldn't detect palms very well. Now apparently that's been fixed in 12.3 and there have been a lot of complaints that the iPad Pros just have had weird misspellings. The software keyboard has been misclicking all the time and I'm assuming that's been fixed. I'll report back on that. Oh and look at that. So the i14s with the LKTE9 chip, the W1 clones basically still work in 12.3 beta 2. You know first time I did it it glitched and I thought the animation was broken but Apple has not fixed it yet. I 100% anticipate that Apple will block these with software eventually from using the W1 chip, but I'm sure you'll still be able to connect them by holding the Bluetooth. We'll certainly see about that one, but not been blocked yet. There's a funny bug someone sent me as well, and it still works in 12.3 beta 2. So on the call screen, emergency call screen, basically place your device on charge after entering it, and then just sit here until the screen times out. It'll go black. So now we remove the device and it's stuck on this charge screen, basically. You can't do anything, basically. It gets frozen here. Okay, guys, I'm exhausted. Probably the longest video I've ever made, but there it is, the latest, and you guys can expect this and more from me. So I appreciate everything you guys do for me. Thank you for making my dreams a reality, and I'm gonna be drawing that AirPods winner right now. Otherwise, guys, thank you. All right, and here it is. But before that, I just wanted to show you this. If you're actually curious about what the H1 and W1 chips look like, there they are in comparison to each other. So each one is just a little bit larger, but super interesting stuff. Um, anyways, so let's pick that one guy, one lucky winner. And here we go. So Nino TL, cool. You have one, my AirPods and wireless charging case. So very cool. If you're watching this, add your Insta into your about page. All right guys, otherwise, thank you for watching. Peace.